I'm heading towards the Rodopi Mountains to see some of the last remaining captive bears in Bulgaria, before then tracking them on their incredible journey all the way to their new home in Kent. Under communist rule, European brown bears, which once roamed wild right across Europe, were bred purely to be shot by trophy hunters for sport. It was a practice known as canned hunting. Now it's banned. One of the breeding facilities was here at Kormisos, near the mountain village of Laki. At one point, over 75 bears were kept in captivity here. Since then, most have either died or been relocated to zoos or animal parks around Europe. But today, two of the last remaining bears are due to be rescued. The only way to describe this place is a prison for bears. This is nothing like a wildlife park or even the enclosures at a zoo. The bears were reared simply to be killed and this long line of concrete pits gives you some idea that it was more factory production line than humane breeding program. Pacing up and down in their open air cells are 16 year olds Milcho and Gosho. The wooden floorboards of their enclosures are rotten and broken. The iron fencing rusted. At night they curl up in tiny barred cells to sleep. Although the bears can certainly sense one another and occasionally glimpse each other through the bars, they have absolutely no contact. And I can tell just by looking at the behaviour of them constantly going around in small, tight circles, they certainly bear psychological scars. When breeding was outlawed, the people running this facility simply abandoned the bears. It's only because of villages like Resista Zavrakov that the bears have even survived. Hello, Rosie. So how often do you come up and see the bears? What about the conditions here for the bears? But today, Milcho and Gosho will finally leave their concrete cells. A British conservation charity has raised the money to transport them back to Kent and a one and a half acre woodland home specially created for them. Of course, bears live in the forest around here. Why not just simply turn them out, release them? Well, we, these poor bears, they've got no way of feeding themselves. They don't know how to hunt and forage. They would just go into town and they'd go into bins, they'd raid people's houses, they'd end up getting shot. So that's why we can't release them. They've got no way of surviving in the wild. So we need to keep them in captivity, unfortunately. Remember, this guy is going to probably live for another 35 years. So we've got to give those 35 years in a way that that thing is going to be happy. In order for the bears to be moved safely, Alex, the local biologist, first has to tranquilize them. It's a tense 10 minute wait for the anesthetic to take effect. As soon as it has, it's all hands on deck. Two, one, go! <laughs> That must weigh 25 stone. <laughs> it's a heavy animal. Getting the bears into the pickup is only the first part of their journey. The pickup then has to make it down the mountain to the main road, where the bears will then be transferred to holding cages in the back of a specialist lorry for the remainder of the journey. The bears are being moved by animal transport experts, a keeper who have kitted out the truck with water troughs and feeding mechanisms, meaning that these doors won't be open until Milcho and Gosho step foot on British soil. But before they get there, pairs of drivers working in shifts will have to transport the bears through nine countries and more than 1,500 miles. In Bulgaria, these are two of the last brown bears to be held in captivity. They were bred just to be hunted, and each has now spent the last 16 years alone in their concrete pens. I've been helping rescue them. After they were darted, we moved them onto a special truck, which is now making the long journey by land back to the UK. Their destination is the Wildwood Trust in Kent. They're now only a few hours away, and the quarantine area is all but complete. 
Well, Peter, it's a bit of a muddy, wet day, but it the is. enclosure has, I think, the term is potential. It has. It's a great enclosure. The chaps here have done a fantastic job. We're trying to give the bears everything they need. You can see there's lots of stuff for them to play with. And, of course, the, the night quarters where the vets can look after them. This is the quarantine enclosure, so now I understand they're going to be in a much larger enclosure. Ultimately, we're going to make a massive enclosure, and then we're going to cage the people as they go through it, and the animals will have the big space. As night falls, all Peter and I can do is watch on as welders finish off the temporary pens into which we'll be transferring the bears. At 8 p.m., the bears arrive. And we've got our work cut out moving two 200 kilogram animals out of the truck and into their night quarters. Ready, Steve? Yeah. Wow, exciting nice. stuff. Bears quite calm, actually, which is a really good sign. Now that we've got the bears off the truck, they're given as long as they need to take their first tentative steps into their new home. Due to essential quarantine regulations, it'll be months before the bears get to enjoy their acre and a half enclosure that's currently being finished for them. But the moment it's ready, we'll be here to see how they get on. Winter turns to summer, and I've returned to witness the first bears release into the new enclosure. And complete with plunge pool, waterfall, dens and native fruit trees, this acre and a half couldn't be further from the concrete pits from which the bears were rescued. With noticeably more muscle and a beautiful thick coat, the bear is almost unrecognisable from the one I met last year. We're minutes away from releasing this bear into his new enclosure, and I've been given the honour of opening the gate. Given how the bear started out in life, it's unsurprising that he initially shows some apprehension. But one hour later, the first of the two bears enters the new enclosure. The second bear will join him soon. Bred to be hunted and confined to concrete pits, these bears started off life with the odds stacked against them. But witnessing their relocation to this amazing environment is the perfect end to this wildlife rescue. This has to be one of the most uplifting one-shows that we've ever had. It's yeah. incredible. And we've got some lovely pictures now of Milchow and Gosho. Oh. Look, there they are, looking healthier oh. than ever. Oh. And apparently they are sleeping heavily, which is a good sign as hibernation is approaching. Yeah.